Do you game with a 4K 120 Hz gaming console while your Hue box just sits there worthless? Were you hoodwinked by the Hue Dynamic app promising to sync only to find out that you need a camera pointed at your screen? Can you wait for the version 2 of the Hue Play HDMI sync box that promises 8K without a release date? I can't, and you don't have to either. In this video, I will detail three configurations to help step up your game. Because nobody should have to open their 4K 120Hz console only to find out their Hue Sync doesn't support that resolution. I want to mention this video is not sponsored in any way. As a matter of fact, product manufacturers would probably steer clear of me if they knew what I did to unsuspecting hardware. With that said, if you've made it this far, you need to pick up this HDMI splitter if you want to be rewarded 4K, 120Hz, and Hue Sync. Each of these progressive solutions require it, and there really is no substitutions. If you find one, please let us know below. All right, let's get on with it. In this section, I'll walk you through a stage one setup that allows you to sync your 4K 120Hz console or PC. It assumes you're using your console or PC as a primary streaming device and allows an optional receiver or soundbar. This is what I refer to as setup one. It's basically a stage one setup. You have a 4K 120Hz capable TV, your 4K 120Hz gaming console or PC, the AV Star HDMI splitter, as well as your Hue box. You're going to take your 4K 120Hz output from the Xbox to the AV Star HDMI input. You're going to take the 8K CEC HDMI output 1 here to any available HDMI port on the TV that sports 4K 120Hz. You want to avoid that eARC or ARC channel if you're using a soundbar or receiver. The second output of the AV Star HDMI switch is set output to 1080p. That's 1080p 120Hz. The Hue has no problem with that signal. That goes into any available HDMI port on the Hue. And the HDMI output of the Hue is unused. You can also drive a soundbar or a receiver with the optical out or analog output. After that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your console is set to 4K 120Hz. Note the ports for your reference and remote programming. Also note some TVs are only HDMI 2.1 compliant for 4K 120Hz using a specific port. You may also have to enable it. Example is LG OLEDs like this one may require instant game response on, so it's best to consult manual. And it's worth noting other devices can be connected to available HDMI inputs on your TV, although they will not provide sync. In this section, I'll walk you through a stage two setup that allows you to sync your 4K 120Hz console or PC in addition to other 4K 60Hz devices. Like the stage one, it allows an optional receiver or soundbar. This is a stage two setup. This allows you to sync 4K 120Hz gaming consoles or PC and other devices at 4K 60Hz. In this example, I'm using the Xbox Series X again, driving the HDMI input of the HDMI splitter, taking the HDMI output again, primary HDMI out 1, 8K, going to an HDMI with 4K 120Hz support again on the TV. And just like stage 1, we're taking the HDMI output 2, switching it to 1080p, and driving one of the available ports on the Hue box. Additional peripherals here are connected to other ports on the Hue box and then the output of the Hue box is connected to another HDMI input on the TV. Since you're using multiple inputs on the Hue and the TV, it's best to note which ports you're connecting to for your reference and remote programming. Afterwards, you're gonna to wanna to set your gaming console or PC at 4K 120Hz, and then optionally again, connect an ARC soundbar or receiver, or leverage the analog or digital output. I will mention the Hue box is very slow to switch inputs, and ARC can be a total PIA sometimes, which is what brings me to my third solution. My final setup allows you to sync your 4K 120Hz console or PC and potentially other 4K 120Hz devices such as a secondary console. I personally use a setup with the same devices specified herein and favor it because I disfavor ARC. 
This is my third or stage three setup. It allows you to sync one or more 4K 120 Hertz devices using an HDMI 2.1 receiver. We are bringing the 4K 120 Hertz signal out from the gaming console into an HDMI 2.1 compliant port, such as this 8K port in this Denon. You'll see this Denon has two outputs, more on that later. You could assume this is your amp, 4K 120 Hertz amp with a single output. We're gonna take that output, we're gonna bring it into the AV Star HDMI splitter. The 8K again will go into an HDMI port with 4K 120 Hertz. The second HDMI output again, switched to 1080, will go into uh, one of the ports on the Hue Play box. And again, we're not using the HDMI output in this configuration. We have our other inputs here connected to other ports of the HDMI amp. Some amps will allow you to connect multiple 4K 120Hz devices, and some amps like this one actually only have one 8K 4K 120Hz input. If your receiver does have multiple outputs, you can forego the HDMI 8K output from the AV star. So we'd scrap that line, and you can use the second port from the HDMI receiver to the TV. While the first layout is reliable, it's always best to have things as directly connected to peripherals as possible. Also note on Denon amplifiers and other amplifiers, you might have to enable the 4K 120Hz. On this Denon it's referred to as 8K enhanced. This setup allows you surround sound from your receiver without having to use any eARC or your optical digital output. I know what you're thinking, Jeff, this can't be true, but it is. And that's why we're gonna take a trip downstairs for a quick demonstration. All right, before we get started here, I thought I'd give you a preview of my media cabinet to see all the hardware in action. It's been through a couple of different revisions over the years, so please let me know if you wanna learn a little bit more about it. I have here my HDMI splitter. As mentioned, my output 2 is on 1080p. That drives the Hue Sync box, which is right below my Nintendo Switch here. Even though you're not going to believe it, but this is a Hue Sync box uh, re-sleeved, if you will, for thermal reasons that are no longer necessary. And just to prove it to you and show you that there's no HDMI output, I'm going to lift it up. And hey, look at that. You know what? This guy has been hiding from me for months. His cousin stole my Ferrari, so if you see him, pin him down and let me know. That is my Hue sink box. Again, re-sleeved. I used to have a fan in the rear. So I'll put the cover back on. I'll put my Nintendo Switch back, and we'll give this a try.
I hope these solutions can breathe new life into your setups. If you're interested in another Hue video, check out my GoV versus Hue showdown. And if you're interested in smart lights or home automation, check out my video, Six Home Automation Features That Kill. I started this channel only three weeks ago to demonstrate ways to give products like these a boost and improve quality of life. So if that sounds interesting, stick around.